students did very well on this last quiz, so I'm going to start to look and see what questions students missed. Number three and four had the lowest overall percent, so I know for my data meeting that is what I'm going to focus on. Okay, I'm going to look at my work sample to figure out which ones would be good to bring to the work, uh, data meeting. So I selected one high sample, two medium samples, and two low samples to bring to the data meeting. I made sure when selecting my low and medium and high samples that they're representative of what most students within that group would be doing or showing. Do you also have your own exemplar? I do have my own exemplar, which I will bring as well. Looks like you're ready. Okay, which question did your students struggle most with and which standard did the question address? Um, the students struggled most with number three. Okay, and what standard is that addressing? NF4A. Okay, so what are all the steps students need to be able to do to answer this question? Students need to understand what a, a factor and a multiple are of fractions. Okay. They need to be able to repeatedly add a fraction to create a multiple or multiply a fraction by a whole number. Okay. To create a multiple. Okay. So let's look at the work and see where the mistakes were made in your low sample so we can identify the misunderstandings. Um, both students selected A and B as correct. Um, so a whole or less mm -hmm. and both students said that C was wrong um, it looks to be because it's an improper fraction and mm -hmm. so I think they thought if it was greater than one it could not be a multiple of one tenth so this sample says it's wrong because it goes over ten tenths yep and this sample changed she, it to one and one tenth and said because it's one and one tenth it's not a multiple, a multiple. Okay, so what do you think the misunderstanding is here? I think the misunderstanding is that students think that multiples of fractions stop at one whole. So stop at 10 tenths in this yeah. example. Okay. Were, was there any part of base that broke down? Um, for this example, I think what broke down was the solve. Okay, because they do have their key boxes look good. Mm -hmm. They're showing their work. They just, they just misunderstood mm -hmm. the improper fraction. What strategies did they use or not use that will be helpful in your intervention or reteach? The strategies that both of these samples used was multiplying the fraction one tenth by a whole. Um, so they did that correctly. They multiplied it correctly by nine and by ten. They just do not understand that they could still multiply one tenth by eleven and get eleven tenths. Okay. So let's look at we have your low samples. Let's look at your medium sample and see what your medium sample did that your lows did not. Okay, on this medium sample, there was the same misunderstanding. Um, the student said that. 11 tenths is not correct because it is not one whole. So it's again, they don't understand, they don't understand that an improper fraction can still be a multiple of a fraction. So let's look at your medium sample compared to the high sample and let's see what push we can give this medium group. The high sample clearly understands the fact family of fractions. They have the factors that make the multiple and they're using a number bond to show that in each question. A number bond and equations. So to me that yes. shows they really are understanding it. Mm -hmm. Whereas this group has equations. Right. But not necessarily number bonds in there. And this and the high sample also understands that that um, a multiple can go can be greater than one and it's shown in an improper fraction, whereas these friends got tripped up with um, it being greater than one. Right, right. So let's look at your high sample compared to your exemplar and let's see if there's any tweaks we need to make there. 
well, looking at this, I can gain something from my high sample. I think I should be showing more number bonds in my exemplar because the students are using that and I am using it to teach. But I do not see any visuals or models in the students' yeah. work, and I see a ton on mine. I see the same thing. I don't see any models in here. They're all equations. Yeah. Um, and so what tweak do you think you will make based on that? What change? I will add more models into my instruction, or maybe even out the ratio of models and another strategy like a T-chart or a number bond. But I think I went model heavy maybe on my exemplar and I didn't represent how I would be teaching the standard fully. Are they expected, like when you're teaching the material, are they expected to do the models in I, their work? I would like to see models for students that it would help, but for this student, I think he has such a clear understanding, especially showing it with this strategy and these equations that I don't see why he would need to draw the models. Okay. So maybe incorporating, you have the models, and incorporating in the equation or the number bond so that they have options. And where else in your day can you incorporate or give them the opportunity to see that there are different ways to solve these problems? Well, at the SGI Center, they're working on base problems that look just like these questions. So I think it'll just be really important for me to communicate the multiple strategies that I will be showing so that that can be reinforced in the SGI okay. Center. Right, okay, that sounds good. Okay, so let's move on to the action plan now. What was the overall score on the quiz? 94.2. Wow, <laughs> nice job, that's great. So do, will you do whole class modeling? Like what do you, what's your action plan to address the issue? Um, I will not do whole class modeling because that would only leave a, a couple students in each class that did not gain Get mastery. It. So yeah. because they all have it and they did so well. Yeah, so I won't do guided discourse either. Okay. So where? how will you ensure that the, the few students who missed it um, get that gap closed? Um, and because there's so few in each class looking at my two blocks, I'm not going to pull an intervention yet. I think we'll add it into the spiral and I'll just make sure I'm monitoring those couple students who missed this on the quiz. And in instructional and design, I think I'll go into my spiral and add a note that I need to make sure that I'm mm -hmm. representing improper fractions. Okay. I wonder, too, if the fact that they were all correct tripped them up. I so maybe yeah. putting a note in about that, that, that it's okay. Sometimes they're all correct. Right. And I can start adding that into my Socratives, too. Just right. Okay, so can you write down your action plan at the bottom? Okay, so I'm going to make a note that in my spiral I need to represent improper fractions more often. Um, I'm going to, in my instructional design, um, So add, put the note in, or add your note. Yeah, and then possibly in my Socrative's mm -hmm. You'll do, have a all. question every now and then where all are correct. And then I would also note down to talk with your SGI and make sure she has the same strategies and expecting the same thing that you are when they go there. So we'll receive about, um, cut. <laughs> uh, it just got wordy. The high sample clearly understands the multiple and the fact Cut. Again, question. <laughs> Based on the For number of students. Cut. Sorry. Sorry. No, that's okay. Nick, what are we at? <laughs> what are we at? Yeah. Eight. Eight thirty-two. Because that is the ten-minute block. Cut. <laughs> <laughs> You're gonna have to yeah, leave. Okay, kill me. <laughs> Debbie won't accept any more data meeting invites. She's like in the script, right? She's like the key Heck player. No, Heather. <laughs>